think we are live. We are live. <laughs> <laughs> I see the YouTube. Hello, everyone, uh, and welcome. We are, uh, this is the first uh, of our Tour de Tools series. And we are just verifying that everything is okay with the... <laughs> Looks to be, uh, I'm getting confirmation that uh, it actually works. Because it seems to be a bit of a complex setup. Um, we are, uh, we forgot our webcam and our basically a MacBook is uh, serving as a webcam. <laughs> a bit complex, but it gets the job done. Um, the Sort of Tools series is a bit uh, aimed at expressing in a, let's say, public way, what we tend to do on a day-to-day -day basis. I think we are in a, an AI, a data engineering, cloud engineering world. is a world that is very quickly evolving. Um, and that's in order to stay up to date on what how the landscape looks and where the landscape is going, you need to basically test some stuff. And sometimes it's just by reading the documentation on the first page, and sometimes it's by running a Docker composer, and sometimes it's by, uh, by doing a bit more stuff. But this is... Uh, a bit what we want to do, and we will uh, test on things that we either did not get the chance to test, think we're, that are cool, uh, that maybe are still very small, but we might have some potential, or, or, or stuff that is just fancy. Yeah. Or written in the cool tech. <laughs> or written in the cool tech. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you have any uh, questions, you can ask them in the, in the live chat. So, I'm monitoring that uh, on another screen, yet on another screen. Uh, so feel free to uh, ask questions there. Maybe uh, quickly a, a round of, uh, of introductions. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll maybe introduce uh, Gauthier. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Gauthier uh, studied uh, maybe a little bit of background. So if you to correct me if I'm wrong, because I didn't really prepare it. I didn't either, okay. <laughs> Gauthier studied uh, computer engineering in Nouvelle-Neuve. Um, did a small uh, stint at Kiras, joined Dateroots as one of the first team members um, back in the day, I think uh, almost four years ago, now, three and a half, yeah. something like that, uh, as a data engineer. Um, moved to uh, Canada, uh, did a year as a backend engineer at a startup there, and uh, when coming back to Belgium, we joined us. Very happy about that. Welcome. Good All right. Uh, a round of introduction for Bart. So correct me if I'm wrong, because I also didn't prepare this. Um, you actually are a nurse at the start, and then you you quickly jumped into uh, more technical stuff, and uh, you did the first master in statistics, the second master in uh, management. Am I wrong? No. <laughs> um, okay, not really. Um, and then, uh, and then we met when you somewhat started uh, data uh, We joined, like we joined this venture together, and now um, you started a second company uh, called Deploy.ai. Uh, and when you're not doing uh, one of those two companies, you also have uh, uh, you're also around twenty k in the morning, uh, take <laughs> care of three kids. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's about right. So I, I did come from a bit, a bit of an atypical background. I've been, I've been a programmer since a very young age. Yeah, exactly. but, uh, I studied nursing at some point, and then I went to uh, healthcare economics mm -hmm. and studied optimization algorithms. And through up studying optimization algorithms, actually went into this field that mm -hmm. we are in today. Um, today, the tools we have lined up are Metabase and LakeFS. I'm gonna give the word to the metabase. <laughs> yeah, sure. And we're gonna test to see if all our screen sharing right. stuff Normally works. Normally, the screen sharing should work. Uh, you tell me when I can. Uh, yeah, so that's right. Should be fine. Should work, right? Right. Yes. So, um, a quick introduction about the tool. Why I chose this tool, maybe, and. Uh, and then we're going to dive right into it. Uh, so first of all, I actually discovered the tool because it's written in Clojure. Um, I'm very fond of at the moment. Um, but it's not only that. Like uh, We also see like uh, one or two clients. Actually, one of the clients that we have on DataRoots will be using it. Uh, so it's also a good opportunity to gain a bit of knowledge about it. What it does, uh, at its core, it's really visualization on top of your data. But 
like for an open source tool, I was quite amazed about all the features that are already part of it. Uh, maybe quickly about the setup that I will be showing today. Um, so I actually have a um, small uh, Docker Compose, which is basically a Metabase plus a database here, it's Postgres database. Uh, Metabase only connects to actual databases. I could not just plug uh, some CSV or some uh, XLS on top of it. Uh, I downloaded a short data set, which I transformed using a small uh, Python script. I transformed it to a SQL statement that I can then execute uh, when the database starts. So this is what we'll be using today, because um, I didn't want to use just the plain uh, demo data. I think that's pretty much it on the tool. Um, you can actually dive into it. So it's available on my local. I will put everything on GitHub afterwards. I just had a few things to finish before the the, the, through the tools. Um, so what it looks like, uh, when you're created, you actually have to sign in, uh, give your name and email address, set an admin password. Uh, but I already did all of that. Um, and here, for example, you can see, like I haven't done anything yet. Uh, and you can actually see that it's proposing me an x-ray based on my data sharks attack table. So I actually downloaded uh, this shark attack. And you can see a bit what the data looks like. Um, so in this case, for example, it's already going to tell me a lot of things that I, I really didn't ask for anything. It's just infer this based on um, uh, on the data that's there. So we have a total of almost nine thousand shark attacks. Uh, we can see the age of uh, like distribution of age for shark attacks. So apparently, uh, being in between uh, seventeen and eighteen, uh, <laughs> you have a lot more chance to be uh, to be uh, beaten by a shark. In terms of years, we also see that apparently this is growing. Uh, I would guess it's most likely because yeah, we just have better data to do than we had to. But, but this dashboard is it, is it fully automatic? I did, yeah, now? I didn't do anything. Like I uh, literally, yeah, literally clicked on on this. Uh, what is it? Um, small uh, like this X-ray, as they call it. You can actually save this, I guess, as a dashboard. Uh, we'll try that later. And there are a few things. So they have a map. Uh, so that I've actually looked up. So they have maps included in there. They use OpenStreetMap by default. Uh, and so, because I have actually, so if you look at the data, we can actually, I think we can go and see the data. So I go in my shark tag. So here I actually have access to my data, and you can see like I have a location. Uh, it's all, of course, US. Um, and, and is this like an external data set or, or the one that they use for the tutorial? No, 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 no. So this is this is one I just pulled. Uh, I pulled it from Kaggle uh, somewhere. So, yeah. Cool that you get this visualization out of the box. Yeah. So I actually just took this this small data set uh, that I just I just converted it to a SQL statement because yeah, it's required by Metabase to actually connect to a database. Uh, maybe quickly on that, like they support a lot of stuff out of the box. Probably if you're on the cloud, you can just plug this into your infrastructure, uh, which is yeah, pretty good, uh, pretty good setup. Also, because this actually uses uh, SQL behind the hood, you can like the load is going to be normally on the SQL database and not on the tool. Uh, which I guess then Docker is still a good use case because you, it's basically just a UI. So you don't need much more than that. Oops, sorry. Um, Inception. <laughs> so uh, so the, the tool is actually meant to answer uh, questions inside your company. So this is what, like one of the main things they provide. So let's ask ourselves a simple question, which is, uh, what is the location? So let's say the area in this case, what's the, the state uh, where there is the most short text? So if you actually go into ask a question, uh, I guess it's going to be a simple question. Um, we're going to use our small shark attack data set. Um, and in here, you can say summarize. So in summarize, uh, you could do a group by something. Here, I'm just going to do a plain count. And if I do a plain count, I should have the total number of shark attacks. So now if I go back and I do a count by, so is it area? By the way, all the types, it recognizes them themselves. Uh, like I didn't do anything except for a few of them. Of course, if it's a number in the database, it can infer that it's actually a number. Um, so in here, for example, we can see that most people get beaten in Florida, and much less uh, well, in like inland country, in, <laughs> inland states, of course. Uh, a few of them apparently in Missouri, one of them in Missouri. I wonder how that happened. Uh, but OK. <laughs> Um, so this is what we have. Uh, if I'm happy with this and I want to share this, 
so you can save it. Uh, and then, so I basically answered the question, which is like by, for each area, so for each state inside the United States, like how many people have been beaten or attacked by sharks. Um, so shark attacks, and here I could give the small description. So uh, number of people attacked by state. Um, so you can, you can save this in collections, which I didn't do. Uh, if you save it, you can also add it to a dashboard. Okay, let's create a new one. New dashboard. And there we go. Um, so as you can see the dashboard, you can probably plug a few of those uh, together. And if you save this, you can actually share it. Share it. So you can email it or you can send it to Slack, uh, which brings me to one of the next topics. Um, so we've basically done a few visualizations. We've answered questions which you can share. Uh, you, something else that you can do, but I've never tested it, is to create a pulse. So a pulse is basically a notification on top of your data. right? So you can say, uh, so, beaten by shark, uh, which collection? Okay. And it's like a, a <laughs> notification if, if yeah, like a, I would guess the so. threshold is passed or something. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, okay, but apparently I have really to set up the SFTP server, uh, the SM, SMTP server. Sorry. Um, so there is all of that. Uh, if you go into more advanced, so here we saw so simple questions, custom questions, but you also have native queries. So you have a full uh, SQL editor on top of your data. So here it's a, it's going to be very dumb, dumb, but from shark text. In a ten, um, you can really query your data, and here you could do as complex queries as, as you want, and then basically visualize on top of that. No. Um, and can, can you create because now you made like a, a simple visualization? Can you also make a dashboard with like multiple visualizations? Yeah, yeah. So, so this is what we have, right? Uh, so now it's like the initial uh, thing that they provided. Yeah. Actually, I have no idea where the dashboards are. Or analytics. So okay. I actually created the dashboard with this visualization. So I guess if you add another one, you can have a, you can have this next to each other. Maybe we can do this uh, using this plan thing. Like this. So you could probably then share the full dashboard as well. Yeah. All right. So your dashboard was shared. So there you go. Then we actually created the full dashboard. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Maybe something quite important as well is that there is a lot of work that's been done in admin, like uh, just looking it up. So you can really set up email, uh, Slack credentials. Uh, there is a whole user management. So here you can read the permissions. You can really see who can do what and you can restrict quite some access uh, on each data set, which is pretty nice. Um, I think you can even, in the data model, you can, uh, this is also really, really good. Like in parts of your um, um, data cleaning, you can also do in this tool. So for example, let's say this ID should not be just, uh, you could say it's a location, for example, and I guess you can override the type and then you can use it accordingly in the tool. So that's uh, something that's really nice as well. Let's say something was not recognized as it should be, or you just put everything as text inside your organization to just keep everything flowing. Um, you can use that, and you can also create high-level filters that you can share between people. Cool. So, nice. That's that's pretty much it, guys. Like, uh, and it's open source, right? I'm looking. And at it's the, fully open source. Fully open source. Yeah. At the hit it page, there's twenty-four thousand stars. It's so significant. Yeah. <laughs> if you see, I've, I've never seen this being used at, uh, in Belgium, at least. Do, 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 if, you, if you've seen places where it was used, yeah, so we're like there is one of our clients that actually gonna, that is going to use it. Okay. To, to basically, I think it's a very good tool if you are in, in this process of analyzing data and sharing business insights. Like you can quickly do this question and then you share it with business and then you can actually see what, what's in the data. Because this is very similar to something like uh, a Tableau or how are you? you have to pay for them. Oh, you <laughs> what are the, well, we actually have a question from, uh, from Sam, which maybe links a bit to this page. <laughs> 
Can you integrate an external identity provider, for example, OpenID Connect, to this? Uh, let's see. Sharing authentication. Uh, so you have LDAP and Google. So okay. Oh, well. within the open source. Uh, yep. And what is their business model then? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good. Uh, I don't. I don't know if they have specific features that they only release for themselves. Like, is it a core like open open source thing? What's the what's the license? So uh, they, have, they have a Metabase Enterprise Edition, so. Ah, hold on. Yeah. We well, probably have a lot more uh, options around uh, user management and stuff. Right. Enterprise, right. Let's see. OK, so you can go row level permission. OK. Uh, auditing tools as well. Yeah. Yeah. We, we got another question from uh, Wout. Is there any data prep included, uh, like Power Query in Power BI or Tableau? Or is it pure SQL? I think it's pure SQL. So the only thing I've seen is really pure SQL. So the thing is, uh, what what I liked about it is that you do have an interface. So um, I think if you go in the data here, for example, you could say so. For example, here I have a lot of rows for which the case number is zero and there is nothing. So I guess this is plain wrong data. So normally. That's it. Oh, nice. uh, and if you save this, then everybody's going to benefit from this. Uh, and it's, it's, is it like a filter on top of the actual data, or do you and actually transform? No, 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 no. It's just it's a filter. filter. Yeah, that's nice. And the, the SQL that you showed is probably like uh, just like mapped to the actual query engine. Like if it's big query, you write in then yeah, yeah, BigQuery yeah. SQL. Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. This is what I would expect as well. And you can refresh the data. OK. Cool, cool. And you have, oh yeah, maybe that's interesting. Like you have a lot of different. Uh, <laughs> okay, maybe pie charts I wouldn't choose, but um, like you have, yeah, trends, gosh. Is it is it purely visualization, or does it also get into the domain of, of uh, forecasting stuff? Or is it no, 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 purely no, visualization. Purely visualization. It doesn't do. It doesn't have any built-in algorithm. I don't think it's meant for it. Okay. It's really just sharing insights inside your uh, your organization. So basically, here I have uh, this. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Any other questions on the chat? Uh, maybe. No, I don't think so. Um, okay. I think that's it. And that's unless, it. Uh, unless somebody else has a question, I should look at the yeah, camera. Maybe, um, like you're you're running this locally now in, in Docker probably. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you go about deploying this? Like, is this uh, is this like one big service or is this multiple things? <coughs> no, 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 it's it's a small jar. So so you decide where you put it. Um, I mean, they 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 have a pre-built Docker, which is really good. Uh, so that you can just put it in. I would expect that if you go, for example, on GCP, you could use Google Cloud Run because it's going to scale. Um, Amazon is the same now. They, they release also a basically serverless Docker that doesn't cost you if you don't use them. I don't know about Azure, uh, but you could run this in ACIs. Uh, because does it need a lot of compute resources? I don't think so because the, the, load, the load should be on the database. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Except you really, really do hardcore visualization, or you have a lot of data points, then mm -hmm. like depending on the, the aggregation level you're using, it might be more difficult. Yeah. And when do you define when, uh, like, when you have a dashboard? Can you like, do you need to do a hard refresh, or does it refresh every every other? So it add a refresh button. So I would guess, uh, I mean, I would guess every time you do a hard refresh on the page, you actually get new data. Um, and this, I think this is actually plugged into the data. What is this? So here I'm seeing a view. Here I'm seeing a view. The, the loading text. <laughs> <laughs> it's just doing science. Uh, so here I'm, I'm watching a view, but um, like if you want to really hard refresh that view, you can. But I'm guessing that dashboards are really plugged onto the data. Yeah. Metabase just uh, it's just sitting between the world. Okay. Cool. Yeah.
and then uh, let's go to uh, Lake FS. Yeah, I'm the list of share. I'm gonna That's it. take a moment to set everything up. actually heard uh, complaints about my mouse but uh, <laughs> so for next time we need a solution to my mouse <laughs> but on the chat on the chat yeah, oh, yeah. yeah your mouse is really doing a lot of work that's it my mouse was louder than you Hola. lake fs um its tagline is transform your object storage into a git like repository which uh it very much seems to be like. <laughs> what I uh, did for this session is just to, to use the get started uh, um, documentation. And there's a very, like, like a one line uh, get up and running quickly. Um, oh, wow. From the moment that you do that, you are asked to create some credentials, which I already did. Um, and then I'm able to launch the app. But I'm really quickly going to go back to the, to the front page. So to understand a little bit what it, uh, aims to be um there's a better page i think but it basically it, it is uh versioning for your data lake uh, and that allows you to understand like a certain commit to your data lake like what files were all of what files were changed uh, and it also allows you to very easily roll back or not necessarily roll back but but, but uh, check out uh, an older commit to really understand like what what was happening at that point um I'm gonna show you the app maybe first. So in the app, there's there's this notion of uh, repositories. Uh, repositories is basically like uh, like you have a Git repository, but this is like uh, depends a bit on the backend how it's represented. But if you if your backend would be AWS S3, uh, it would be a, it would be a bucket basically. But is it a bucket? Can you go folder? Like can you can you, let's say in your bucket you have uh, like several like raws like at the really Start like raw slash clean slash, and then can you? Yeah, I think so, yeah, I think so. That, that's how I understood it. Yeah. Okay. What, what it will do actually, it will, it will prefix the let's say the, the sub subfolder that you're targeting, it will prefix it with the master uh, with the branch name, so that it will be master. Um, like you see here, default branch master. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna maybe zoom in a bit small. Um, so we have your foot test, which I uh, is a repository I made. So you see the source namespace is local, so it basically uh. Um, with the Docker Composite, it may make the local storage, which is actually uh, um, AWS, well, the local storage is, but also when you use another backend, it is AWS uh, S3 compliant. So you can use the AWS uh, client to upload files, to copy stuff um, from a specific commit or to a specific branch. Um, but you could, there is also a LakeFS uh, command line uh, interface that you can do for, well, which you can use some stuff with. So what I see you see here now, I'm in the food test repository. And we're basically on the branch master. I only have one branch. And we have two files in there. 42 txt, if we go um, You see here that there are no changes to be committed. So all this typically you will probably do via the command line. But I mean, just for the demo purposes, I'm gonna show you the, the, the UI. So you see that I already did uh, this morning a few commits. So I have uh, created a repository. I committed, committed a file here and I committed a fi another file here. Um, and what we can actually do is then try to see what is in there. Um, let me just quickly see if I can uh, show this here. So this, uh, when I use this uh, commit URI, this is actually from the, uh, yeah. <laughs> of course, the demo gods are not that uh, kind to me. <laughs> um, uh, let me quickly see if I can fix this, and otherwise I'm just going to skip it. Just have to set up the uh, I need to reconfigure your AWS profile. I know you're not using AWS, right? This one I need to reconfigure. Okay, so quickly do that. Um, 
<laughs> but I think this is uh, this is what we've uh, chosen to do with demoing tools. I think this is uh, bound to go wrong a little bit. So I have actually have another sheet screen that I'm copying this from. Think should to go. I guess you would complain if it was not. Voilà. Okay. So, so what I did now, just let me just quickly reiterate, is that I uh, copied the URI of this this first commit to a master, which is basically the creation of the repository, uh, and I can do a lake CTL file system ls. So I'm going to list what is in that specific commit on a master, and there's nothing basically. So at that point, you made an empty commit, basically. It created a repository. Okay. The repository looks like a commit here. Um, I'm gonna <coughs> second commit I did uh, I'm do it again. Our system ls. The second commit actually we have this object 42.txt, uh, and then yet another commit later we have um, yet another one, and that is basically how you uh, commit to the same image. Right? We have 42 that takes the input of our Quick question. Uh, so I see there you have a, like you're using dot slash uh, lake CTL. Like okay. is this, it's just because you did not install the system wide? Right? Exactly, yeah, yeah, it's in my uh, local, uh, local folder. Right. Um, so we're on branch master, we have some commits here. It's, uh, I'm gonna upload something, uh, upload another file. Uh, so. Are you doing this on master or are you on a branch? Or? I'm uh, doing this on master first. Okay. So we have blue to the dummy. Quickly have a look at it. Mm -hmm. look into it. Just some text, some placeholder text, basically. And that is also the nice thing. Like it can be anything. Like it can be a parquet file, it can be a CSV file, it can be a, it can be a binary. It doesn't care, right? It doesn't care. No. So we have here of out of this to master, and you're going to see in changes that there is one uh, one change. I'm going to commit these. So, uh, uh, blue, commit this change. Uh, and we're going to see this commit as well. That is easy. Let's do the master branch. I'm going to do something else. I'm going to create another branch. How should I call this, Gautier? To the tools. To the tools. <laughs> I started with a G. To the tools. <laughs> voilà. We have a new branch, to the tools. Uh, which branch from master now? Uh, and we're gonna have a look at uh, two tools, and we're gonna upload an object there. So I think for the people that are familiar with Git, it will, this will be uh, this will be very um, recognizable. So we have your taxi.txt, which we're gonna upload. Uh, so if um, now on the tour tools branch, we have uh, basically a change. Here's this taxi.txt that was added. Uh, we're gonna uh, commit the change, and that means that to now on the tour tools we have actually a newer commit, a commit that we don't have on the master branch. What does this reflect on your uh, on your local machine? It's purely metadata, purely representative metadata. But does it is it also the case for the file itself? No, the file must be at this spot on your. I think there will only, how I understood it, but I don't know the exact internals, mm -hmm. there will only be one version of the actual file. Yeah, yeah. And it's just represented in, uh, in uh, metadata, which is actually hosted in uh, Postgres. It's not in the data lake. It's in Postgres. Right. That's, that's important. No. Um, so, what you typically want to do, no, what you can do, but you maybe not always want to do, but what you can do is now, from the moment that you have this other branch, which is newer than master, and you want to merge it, you can actually do some checks. Like, for example, like we've been, uh, Looking quite a bit, like been quite active in, for example, great expectations, which where you can do some data quality uh, test, uh, etc. So this is something that you could in your CI CD actually run before then actually and see if it does everything pass before merging into master. So you would uh, okay. Yes. Yeah. So that allows you to do this uh, this way, um, and also of course like your master now because it's in a new branch like with Git, um, it's very easy to. Come back from it, right? 
So can you uh, can you create a merge request then, or? Yeah, I can do it in the UI as well. But typically, yeah, again, course, like yeah. you would you would do it um, CLI, right? You would do it in CLI. So compare uh, branch to uh, to the tools. Well, there's one change actually. Taxi.txt was added. I'm gonna merge it. Merge the tools into master. Yes, merge completed. And then we should see that in master. We're in mastery. Oh. And we have. Uh, okay, and assuming it's cool. So that it's actually taking the okay, taking the commit that you did on the other one. Yeah. And what happens if you let's say make a change to a file and then you upload it in the same spot? Like let's say we would have text.txt with something different in it, but you upload it again. So you mean a, a change to a file? Basically. Yeah. Yeah. So it's in the document. So so with, with Git you get sometimes when it's easy to solve you get like uh, basically a, diff. a, 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 a diff and sometimes an automatic okay. merge. Uh, here, it, the user is basically uh, responsible to saying what needs to happen if there is a conflict. So let's say let's say you go in there and you okay, okay, I get it. Um, well, like maybe do and actually I haven't tested. So you mean like when there is a new version, for example? Yeah, exactly. Like the, if you change forty two to txt and you add a bunch of stuff in there. Well, let's test it, right? And how does it go back in time? <laughs> if it's the, um, huh? yeah, just add, can just add enough text so that we maybe double the size or something. Okay. Yeah. So forty-two to text name, um, and we're gonna add this to uh, another branch then. No, no, the same branch, right? To master. I would, yeah. Uh, that no. probably will be simply be overwritten. That's what it is. Let's, but, let's but, see. Let's but, see. But you you should be able to go back in time, though. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You will okay, be exactly. Um, voila, a few seconds ago, so it was updated. Mm -hmm. You need to still commit the change, and you see it was changed. Commit change. Uh, add go to here to forty two. Yeah. We actually see a lot commit here, right? And uh, well, just by doing the lake CTL FS mm -hmm. LS on this one, we will see the listing of the new one. There is probably also a way to uh, easily retrieve the, retrieve the file, yeah, right. <laughs> but I would need to look. <laughs> yeah, into no, the... it's fine. It's just. Uh... But in this case, there, there will be uh, two versions of the file. Mm -hmm. That's what I assume. Okay. And uh, I think it, because all of this, like, if you, if we talk about. Uh, the data lakes, right? Like, there is a lot of tools out there that you might want to integrate with. And I saw on their uh, website, like Spark and all that stuff. How does it play together uh, if it plays together? Well, the nice thing is, is that it's very, in my eyes at least, it's very simple and small. So it is just, so there are some utilities to easily push data there. So mm -hmm. I think that it's fully AWS that's free compliant. Okay. Uh, there are a lot of libraries. Uh, available. I think the the uh, let's just quickly see here. Um, it's here. Yeah, it's like AWS, CLI, Spark, Python. Yeah, yeah. Python. Um, but it is a bit independent of that. So you can use their CLI. You can uh, do it. And the the nice thing is that if you compare, for example, to something like uh, Delta Lake, Delta Lake is very heavy on Spark. So it works very nicely. And which Delta Lake is, of course, like in terms of functionality, much bigger than than something like LakeFS. Um, because it does much more things than just versioning. Mm -hmm. But it is very dependent on one specific way to get your files there. While here, it's uh, a bit uh, with much more flexibility going forward. Like maybe my, my data pipelines, so they are mainly built in Spark, but that might not be the, the same a year from now, right? I'm actually looking at how they integrate the Spark. Because how can you? But a lot of this is, is it's really like the hit flow, right? Like you just, like either in the master or in another branch, like you create something new, and then before it actually becomes available mm -hmm. to, let's say, the general public, you need to commit it. Yeah, but what I'm wondering a bit is because like this is all Git flow based, right? Mm -hmm. um, like what happens if you, when you produce data using something else than Git? Basically, let's say I, so I did a Spark job. I'm really happy with it. So like I produce some data in some S3 bucket spot. Um, like how do you connect this with the AKFS? Like how does this information get propagated? Uh, like is it a new? Is it going to be a new commit? Is it going to be? 
I think it will show up, but I'm not 100% sure. Mm -hmm. I think it will show up as a new file mm -hmm. uh, that needs to be committed. Okay. Okay. To not be That's part of the of the of the existing commit. Okay, so it's like you do an extra step yeah. afterwards to actually yeah. commit. Okay. And that's actually because all this metadata is is not in your in the same space as your files. Your metadata is in Postgres, mm -hmm. um, and basically your metadata represents how your how the content of your data looks like. Okay. And if you just drop in a new file, it is a file that you cannot, but it's not yet part of your of your uh, let's say your repository. Then mm -hmm. it's a repository. Then that, and then I have the next question, which is because it's super interesting. Like, can you because you can have the same way you have Git, right? You can have protected branches and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, can you have protected um, objects? So like, you can say not everybody can touch master, for example, or do you have to do this on the on the the cloud provider side? I think you need to manage this in, in CSV. Okay. I don't. Uh, I haven't seen it uh, yet, but it could be wrong. Mm -hmm. I think what I like, like it's, it's a very much this makes adding to your your data lake very much an atomic operation. Like you can, uh, like from the moment that you start defining what gets added, from the moment that you actually commit it, it becomes part of it, and you can also revert it. Um, in the context of uh, what we also, of course, look at this is is when you build machine learning models, you want to have a reference to how the data looked at the moment that you actually trained. This model, what was your input data to come to a certain perform, performed or not performed model? Mm -hmm. This makes this very easy. You can just like you store the, the 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 commit ref as a as a parameter, um, and this makes like this whole CICD part, like in terms of checking data quality of new data, goes out much much That's cool. much simpler. And can you can you somehow link this to your actual? Because normally, like you would. Make change in your code that would trigger something and that would get applied. Can you have a link between your your Git commit, like your actual Git commit, and then the DKFS? Like, can you specify a commit, or can you? Because I would imagine this would come in handy. Like, you can say this data, this code, this no. this change. I don't think directly, okay. um, but I can be wrong. Well, actually, I've seen that you can add parameters or something. So maybe you could express this as a parameter. Okay. Um, but I'm not completely sure. I think I see this somewhere. Okay. So maybe, um, like, maybe do we have questions in the chat? I don't know. Ah, yeah, yeah, we, have, <laughs> yeah. we actually have. Can Lake LakeFS detect changes done by external tools to objects? Or does it work only on object based data? So, like, I think this is what Gautier asked. Uh, I think it's similar to Spark example. Exactly. I think it, uh, it does. It, it will represent, re recognize it as a new file mm -hmm. um, that you then need to uh, commit to actually become part of your repository. Or should all external tools interact directly? No, it should not. Um, I think the, the other question, so to me, it's very cool that this is very, like, a small thing. So, it's, it's very modular. and. Uh, but it does from the moment that you that it becomes part of your data lake, it becomes a very important part. And I'm wondering whether it's uh, ready for that at this point. Like, if you can just maybe switch off my screen share for a second. Um, and I'm just simply wondering because uh, it is still. Uh, if you look at Git, maybe you can open the Git page. I think the, the number of stars, for example, which is well, it's worth what it is. <laughs> But I think it's, it's, it's not huge. Right. It's not huge, no, exactly. But of course, it is also very much a niche thing. Yeah? I think. Uh, it says 820. Yeah. So 820. So that's. Uh, and it's written in Go. Yeah. So yeah, it looks very cool to me. I'm really curious to see uh, where it will go. I think it's mainly, I looked a little bit into the company behind it. I think it was called uh, Treeverse. I think it's, you see it in the GitHub URL. Uh, yeah, Treeverse, yeah. If I'm uh, correct, there are like roughly two guys that are already actively uh, building this. It looks really cool. Wanting to see where this goes. Okay, so yeah. well, I think we're uh, at think uh, we're roughly through. at the end of. Uh, <laughs> so I think the, we, we, if anybody has any requests for tools, so we have a few lined up. I will go over them uh, shortly. But uh, if anyone has any requests for tools, feel free to uh, ask them on. YouTube, maybe on the YouTube video. It's maybe the easiest. Can you, or we have, don't we, have, can we use an email? Uh, 
or, or send an email to Gautier at datarouts.io. I'll gladly take that. Uh, I'll gladly well, take it. What kind of emails uh, do you welcome? <laughs> <laughs> All kind of emails. Uh, I mean, so it's open to a lot of work things. emails. That's, that's, the only, uh, that's the only limitation there. So voilà. email, um, LinkedIn is also a possibility. So we'll add maybe the reference to the to Lake Invest and to Metabase on the and, and the meta, the meta page ID as well. And the meta page, good point. Out to this maybe too much. Yeah, which is why target the email just say <laughs> much easier to press. Okay, okay, good. Um, wait, I'm gonna quickly open our meetup page, um, and then I'm gonna take a good look at what's next. Um, so the next tour of tools is uh, guild.ai, which is presented by uh, Tim Leers, our colleague. And guild.ai, I mean, the tagline is better models by measuring. So it's probably something to do with metadata around models, but I haven't looked into it in detail. Which one? Uh, guild.ai. Uh, guild.ai. And the other one is, uh, is uh, I'm really uh, interested to see that is Amundsen by uh, Lyft, which uh, Cotier will uh, present, which is basically uh, a metadata discovery hub. Yeah, there is thing. a, I've seen it, like there is a lot of tools to yeah. it. Uh, I've still not actually used it. So. Yeah. But it's something like uh, metadata hubs is something that's really, mm -hmm. like there's a lot of hype around it. I think all the big cloud providers are, are now coming with their own solutions to it. So I'm interested to see what, uh, what Lyft is open sourcing. And then uh, that's, that's the 30th of March, and then we have uh, a check. Thank you. Uh, then we have uh, the 13th of April, uh, we have uh, Dexter and Playwright Python, and Dexter will be presented by Frederick. Um, and I will show Playwright Python. Dexter is. Um, not sure if this will offend people, but this is something that is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the airflow tool, though, can I say that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it, it can be. Uh, the thing is, like, it, it's like everything. The at least airflow is already making it to cloud providers now, so like it is big and interesting enough so that it's actually a service, uh, which is uh, not the case for Dexter. So no. I think to be looked at, maybe not. Yeah. To make Definitely it. interesting to see what exactly. it uh, what it brings uh, versus airflow. Company. Yeah, I, I want to see that as well. Uh, Playwright Python, something I put there, is, uh, I think it's a cool tool that basically allows you to programmatically um, run stuff in your browser. But by having that ability, you can uh, much easier do end-to-end -end tests. But you can also uh, use this for things like uh, RPA, robotic process uh, automation, stuff like this. And, uh, okay. So looking forward to that. And for the other ones, uh, we are very much maybe, taken. Maybe in the chat. I, Nobody yeah. is, a, is a tool or a, a <laughs> remark, a question. So we have uh, actually the, the, the developer of DKFS here. <laughs> <laughs> and he says that uh, tools can and should access DKFS object directly using S3 protocol. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, I, that I've seen. So Spark, yeah. for example, it's, been a, it's, it's really just partition based. Yeah. Um, That's really cool. Huh? But th that means but by, yeah, but by accessing the endpoint on Lake FS. Exactly. So you, you you pass by Lake FS. Oh, that is so. Oh, and I have a correction here. There are ten retrievers. <laughs> Thank you, Ariel. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the correction. Well, uh, if there's anything else that I messed up uh, in uh, in presenting Lake FS, just let me know. I will I will add it to the uh, array items on uh, <laughs> on the YouTube description. <laughs> it's cool that you joined, Ariel. Really nice. I don't have anybody from it at least. It's different, so yeah, that's the difference. <laughs> but you have a pickle rick uh, behind you. I, have, I do have a pickle rick, yeah. It's, it's worth something, right? It is. And, uh, on that note, <laughs> thanks a lot, everyone, for uh, attending, and uh, see you next time. See you around. Okay.